This is your focus 13 practice quiz. In number one, it says, is the following a parallelogram? Explain why or why not. So in this picture, I see I have one pair of congruent sides. That is not enough to prove this is a parallelogram. So I'm going to say no. Let's say the picture or the figure only has one pair of congruent Let me add a word. One pair of opposite, that's important, sides that are congruent. So what would be good for you to study for number one are the properties of a parallelogram because it may not be this exact property that shows up on your actual quiz. So the properties of a parallelogram are it has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. It has two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent. The diagonals bisect each other, and the opposite angles are equal. So those are the main ones we're going to be asking you about. So I would know those so you can answer number one, yes or no, and explain why. Number two is a proof question. So we're going to fill in these blanks that were given after we examine what's going on. So it says, given ABCD is a parallelogram, we wanna prove that triangle AED is congruent to triangle CEB. So I like to draw on my picture to see what I'm aiming for. So triangle AED, we're trying to say that is congruent or prove that that is congruent to triangle CEB. So in step one, they said ABCD is a parallelogram, and that was given for the reason. That's why we know that is true. And then they said AD is congruent to BC. So I would write that on the picture. And then the reason you know that normally goes with what was above it in the proof. Not always, but usually it's something right above there that gave you that information. And so because this is a parallelogram, and we just talked about that in question number one, Opposite sides would be congruent. So you could write that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Or another way to say it is just simply say definition of a parallelogram. And the next statement says angle DAC is congruent to angle ACB. All right, so DAC is congruent to angle ACB. And the reason is those are alternate interior angles and those are congruent. And then they said in the next statement, number four says AE would be congruent to, and we wanna fill in the blank. Then look at the reason over here. It says diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So that means they're telling you the reason is these are going to be equal to each other because they bisect each other. So AE would be congruent to EC according to our picture. And then the triangles are congruent because of side angle side. So we're going to ask you something similar and you're just going to fill in blanks within the proof. You will not be responsible for writing the whole proof. All right, let's look at number three. It says, use the diagram to find the indicated links if G is the centroid of triangle ABC. So if you remember from class, the centroid comes from the midpoints. It's the median, the three medians of the triangle cross at the centroid. And a median is from the midpoint of a side to the vertex of the opposite side. And so I could go ahead and label that those would be congruent. And then they said AG is equal to 36. And the other rule, remember, is the like two-thirds, one-third rule. So from the midpoint to the centroid, so let me grab another color. From each midpoint to the centroid, that's the shorter part of the median, and those are all one-third of the total median and then the vertex to the centroid is the longer part of each median and that is two-thirds of the total so this one right here gb would also be two-thirds and this one right here would be two-thirds so the two-thirds one-third rule is part of centroid and then the fact that each side has a midpoint 
because the median is formed from the midpoint to the vertex of the opposite side. And now let's see what else they told us. CB is 42. All right, so I've drawn everything. Let's see, so this is 42. That tells us that CF is 21 and FB is 21. So we could go ahead and answer that first question over here. And then it asks for AF. So let's see what else they told us. GE is three. So that's the one third. That means there's two more sections that are equal to three on the segment CG, which is down here at the bottom. So we could say that would add up to six. Then AF is the total. And let's see, they gave us AG is 36. I'm gonna move this for a minute. Oops, I didn't mean to take it all away. So, if AG is 36, and that is two-thirds, then each third is equal to 18. And so therefore, AF would be 18 times 3, which would be, let's see, 30 plus 24 is 54. And then DB is the total, and they gave us DG is 12. And grab another color. Oh, I've already used that color. So let's do DG. It's getting kind of crowded. Which is the smaller part of the median DB. And they said that equals 12. And they want you to find DB, which is the total. So there are three pieces of this median that all equal 12. So the total is 12 plus 12 plus 12, or 12 times 3, which would be 36. All right, so lots to pick out on that picture. Let's look at number four. If Z is the end center of triangle MNO, find the measure of angle NMO. So end center is formed from the angle bisectors. So that means these are equal, those are equal, and those would be equal. And we're trying to figure out the measure of angle NMO. Well, here, I'm going to leave it labeled that way, but then I'm just going to highlight angle NMO. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so the things we know are if this little angle up here near angle, the letter N is 22, the one beside it would also be 22. And then we would know that these two near the letter O are equal to each other because that angle is also bisected. <clears throat> so let's say 6X minus 2 equals 7x minus 7, and figure out what x is, which will help us figure out the rest of the problem. All right, so if I subtract 6x, I get negative 2 equals x minus 7. If I add 7, I get 5 is equal to x, which will help me because I can plug that back in now. So 6 times 5 minus 2 is 28 degrees. So now I know each one of these is 28 degrees, which will help me figure out the one I'm looking for because all the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So let me grab another color. In this corner where letter N is, we have a total of 44 degrees in this corner. In the corner where O is located, we have 28 plus 28, which would be 56 degrees. And so the angle we are looking for would be 180 minus 44 minus 56. And just to save time, I'm going to calculate it over here. Okay, so that would just be 80 degrees for the one we want. So let's put angle NMO equals 80 degrees. All right, and then number five says O is the circumcenter of triangle ABC. So we need to find AM, OB, and PC. I like to label the triangle if it's not already labeled. So they've labeled some stuff about circumcenter, but not everything that we can. <clears throat> so there are perpendicular bisectors that form the circumcenter. So that means that these are equal, and those are equal, 
and these are equal, and then P, M, and N are all perpendicular to those sides of the triangle. Okay, so A, O, let's see, is labeled already, that's 14. B, C is 16. And M, B is nine, and A, P is 10. Okie doke, so then they asked for A, M, so AM would just also equal 9 because that is the same thing as MB. So that would just be 9. OB, let's see. Do we have enough information yet? What we could do is we also know with circumcenter that it's equidistant from the vertices. So that, I think, would help on this one. So AO, OB... Let me highlight those three that are from the circumcenter to the corners or the vertices. Those are all equal. So if we know one of them, we know all of them. And we do know AO is 14, so therefore OB would also be 14. And OC would also be 14 if we needed it, but we do not. So PC is the last one, and that's pretty simple because that would just also equal 10. So that one wasn't too tough. Okay.